Alright, in this video we are going to be taking a look at a later build of Windows 10, specifically build 10130. Windows 10 launches officially on July 29th, and so we are just a month away, and so this build should be pretty close to what we will be seeing in the final version. So stay tuned and we'll take a look at how Windows 10 looks and performs on uh, small, uh, low-powered uh, devices. So here we are looking at the Windows 10 uh, start menu and you'll notice um, a couple things uh, very different from Windows 8 and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing in this video is comparing um, a small tablet compared to the latest version of Windows 8.1 because really most people didn't run Windows 7 on their tablets. Um, so first of all the first thing you'll notice is you have the full start bar back um, so even when you're on the start screen you still have this desktop uh, experience here and you have your start button a universal back button which this is a really cool idea and um, it's still a little buggy right now uh, but if this is basically the same idea of the back arrow on Windows Phone so as you um, you know open up multiple apps and here we can go ahead and try this here let's open up settings and we'll click on start and let's open up the store and see if this works so the way this is supposed to work is by hitting back, you'll go back through the previous applications that you are in. So let's so we'll wait for the store to load up here, and we'll press back. So we go to the start screen, hit back again. No, nope. so it took us back to the store. Oh, there we go. It took us back to Maps, which was an app I was in earlier. Yep. So it actually, it does seem to work. I don't know why it didn't go back to the app that we were just in, but again. There are some bugs in this build. Um, I don't. I expect the bugs to be worked out, um, but we're kind of just looking at the functionality. So that's a neat little idea. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and open up um, settings. We'll open the store up, uh, which I guess is still up. And let's open up Project Spartan here, which should very soon uh, be renamed to Microsoft Edge. And then what we're going to do is a very familiar thing from Windows 8.1. We're going to swipe in from the left and we should get the task view. So before on Windows 8 this brought up a little panel on the left hand side where you could pick which app you wanted to switch to um, or you could close the app from there. I like this a lot better because it gives you a much larger preview of what you have on your computer and I think it's just a, a more familiar way to get to that. So if we want to jump back into settings we just tap on the settings thumbnail and we jump right back into settings. Take a quick look here. This is what Cortana looks like. So you access Cortana simply by hitting the little Cortana icon here, and it'll pop open uh, this little uh, search screen. So I just hit home, and we get a quick little uh, summary of topics that I've uh, subscribed to. Um, this is again very similar to Windows Phone. I like this. Uh, you just tap that once, and you go to your home, and you get a quick little look at the day. And I like how it pops up in this little uh, like window here so everything anything that you're still working on here still stays and we have a ton of settings here with Cortana that we can go in just like we could on Windows Phone you can set reminders, tell it your favorite places um, if we just tapped on it the first time it says ask me anything and you can use the microphone icon here Cortana what's the weather? Right now it's 91 and mostly sunny. So we can see the layout of the um, apps when you're in tablet mode are um, optimized for that, or everything is full screen. You do maintain the taskbar here at the bottom, which takes up some space, uh, but I like that because this is kind of, I think, what made Windows 8.1 so difficult is you didn't really have that quick and easy way um, to get back to some key things. Uh, if we swipe in from the right, we get the notification center. Uh, swiping in from the right used to be the little charms menu which honestly it really became pretty pointless because it didn't really do that much um, and I think the notification center is a lot better because it's going to show you all your notifications here and you get a lot of quick little interactions here which I just tapped on something and I'm not sure what I did I think we're okay um, so you get like settings uh, you can turn on and off tablet mode you can change the screen brightness here so we can turn the brightness up um, brighter stuff like that um, and you still do have the quick link here to all settings which quickly opens the settings control panel 
so that you can get in and change those computer settings, which is great. I'll swipe in again, and and then uh, like we've always loved in Windows 8, uh, to close you just swipe down from the top, which in the desktop did not make sense, but on touch that is a very simple and clean gesture, and I like that. Um, and I'm glad they kept it in there. So honestly, if you're going from Windows 8 or 8.1 into Windows 10, uh, it's going to be very familiar. Um, there are going to be some things that are very different. Like I said, notifications is going to be very different. Swiping in from the left is going to open up a very different type task view. Um, and the other thing I'll notice, I notice in Windows 10 on touch, at least um, in this tablet mode, is we don't really get access to the desktop. Um, so you notice there's really not a way to jump into the desktop and if we um, want to get to kind of the classic start menu we hit this little uh, icon here in the top uh, left and we get you know our most recently used apps and then we get you know file explorer settings stuff like that uh, but you'll be able to see like if we open file explorer file explorer does now open full screen and it opens in the way that we would expect it to on a tablet full screen um, easy to interact with and swipe down now closes those modern applications as well. So there's not a jarring difference even on touch between apps and classic interfaces. They're all the same. Even if we go into, let's go into all apps here and let's go to Windows Accessories and then Microsoft Paint. So good old Microsoft Paint back from the day um, is still there. Let's wait for it to load. We can interact with it just like we always have and it now works that you simply just swipe down to close it out and here it's actually going to ask us do we want to save no we don't want to save so you even get those uh, classic prompts like I said both of the things coming in from a tablet are going to feel really good um, it's going to be a very simple upgrade because you're already used to the new um, live tile interface a couple changes that are a little jarring and I, unless they fix these in the next month these are things that um, will be a little different um, when you uh, get this is in Windows 8.1 to go through your tiles you went left and right well left and right swiping doesn't work anymore it doesn't really do anything right now I wish they would make it do at least something um, but actually swiping up and down would be how you get through your menu I don't have enough icons right now but you can see it's accepting that gesture of swiping up and down now in Windows 8.1 if you wanted to get to all apps you sw swiped up and then you had all your apps Unfortunately, the way they have it set up now is you have to hit this little hamburger menu button in the top left. Then you get the classic uh, start menu here, and then you go down here and hit all apps. Oops, that's power. All apps, and then you can swipe through all, your all apps. I don't really like this because this is great on the desktop version, uh, but here on the tablet, uh, I would much rather see at very least when you hit all apps for it to open a full screen version so you could see them all on the same screen um, but even then uh, really this little non swipe interface up here I think is a little tedious on a tablet I'd love for them to um, have it to where when you swiped up it would go back to all apps or if because of design issues at least have it so you could like swipe left or right like even if you could swipe right imagine swiping right and then that would pop up that would be a lot better and then have all apps maybe a little bit different interface. So what are the biggest highlights for the tablet? A consistent interface across the board so that modern apps, classic apps, all run in the same interface. So it brings more features to the tablet, um, brings better apps, you know the universal apps will be available here so it's going to bring more functionality um, you know that was missing before. It is going to bring some things that are very different um, and so I think people that really liked uh, Windows 8.1 on the tablet may have some things that are missing. Um, but the reason for it is, is that they're bringing a consistent experience from your tablet to your desktop, to your phone, uh, even to your Xbox. Um, trying to bring that consistent experience across all devices. So all in all, um, I think we're going to see some good updates on the tablet. Um, but the bigger stuff's going to come into play, I believe, with the desktop changes that they've made and um, a lot of the apps, the universal apps that they're working on um, are going to bring some really cool changes. So that's it, that's a quick look at Windows 10 running on a HP Stream 7, a low-end um, small tablet and I will keep looking to see what updates that we get. Thank you very much for watching.